All right. This morning we're looking at living wisely. Um, how many people can you think of that wanted to be successful in something, but they didn't want to take what it took to be successful? Okay. Now to clarify that, uh, a person that when they were young, they wanted to be something great, an engineer or something like that. But when they realized the courses they had to take, the length of time to go to college, they ah, no, nope, not going to do that. Or put it to our age bracket, and most of us could um, lose a few pounds, and we say, I really need to lose, you fill in the blank, pounds. But when it comes to cutting out the candy or cutting out this or cutting out that, we go, mm, maybe next week or maybe tomorrow. So we, we're not ready to give the sacrifice that it takes to reach our goal. Our physical appetite and sometimes our pride keeps us from following what we should do to reach our goal. The same thing can be applied to our spiritual life and to what happens spiritually. Remember, Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life, and few find it. So today we continue in Proverbs. We're going to go back and do a very short review before we hit today because it's a different section. Proverbs 1 through 7, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 7 is a general introduction, and we've been through there. And then we pick up with Proverbs 1, verse 8, through the end of chapter 9 is... Uh, Solomon's talk to his son. He's trying to show him the, the way that leads to wisdom, and he's also talking to him about sexual immorality. And then when it starts chapter 10, it goes to a different thing. Chapter 10 goes into a long thing of little short proverbs, and within that section is today's lesson, because chapter 10, verses 1 through chapter 14, verse 35, is all this little short Proverbs of wisdom. So today, we're going to look at a contrast of righteous and wicked people. And we're going to look at seven sayings that cover such things as wealth and poverty, wisdom and folly. And a new word came up that I have never heard before. I didn't know how to pronounce it, and I happened to catch Jason to ask him, and I said, pronounce a word for me, so I still may be mispronouncing it. It's a figurative term, and it means what our Proverbs today, when you say something in one verse, and then you reverse the order in saying it in the next verse, and it's called a chiasmon. C-H-I-A-S-M-U-S. -S. So that's your new word for today. All right. We're going to start off with verses, chapter 14, verses 8 and 15. And I'll try to point out how it's backward, or one is kind of backwards of the other. Verse 8 says, The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Now, if you go to verse 15, the simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. So you see it's the exact opposite almost in what it says. So we're going to compare the wise and the foolish. And we talked about last week that prudent means people who use discretion, they use careful judgment in doing something. So the sensible person takes time to use what they know and to come up with a plan and figure out what's the best course of action. All right, example. Person wants to buy a new car. Okay, if I go to the dealer and I look at the car, I really like this one over here. But I know I'm using my wisdom that I can't afford it. Now, it may be have all the bells and whistles on it, but the payment's going to be $800 a month, and my little check's not going to cover that. 
So I use what I know and I make the decision to forego that fancy car and to buy the one that I can't afford. That's using our wisdom. That's using our knowledge. That's trying to discern what is good and what's bad. The sensible person will learn from what they did and make mistakes because maybe at some point in the past I bought that car and couldn't afford it and then it was foreclosed on or it was repossessed, whatever word you want to use. So now I've learned from that and I'm going to make a better decision. On the other hand, as Solomon says, the fool doesn't learn from his mistakes. He keeps right on making the same mistake over and over and over because he's stubborn and because he's stupid. And that was the words that were used. In Proverbs, the word fool is used almost 20 times. And it's used to be interchangeable with stupidity and with stubbornness. We look at what are the characteristics of the fool? And there are seven characteristics that the lesson writer points out that show what a fool does. Okay? You think about his speech. Does he make sense when he talks? You think about his morality. Is he living according to God's standards? You think about his discipline. Does he discipline himself or herself in ways that would be upright? You think about their religion. Do they even have one? Or do they say, eh, I don't need any of that God stuff. And they don't pay any attention. You look at their daily life. Do they walk the way they should or not? You look at the way they say things. Do they speak in the wrong way? Do they speak at the wrong time? You know some of those people that they're just totally out there, not paying attention to what's going on. They no longer recognize wisdom when they see it because they're so caught up in what they do and what they want until they're tuning out anyone else. Now, on the flip side, you look at the prudent person or the wise person, and they have seven characteristics as well. And let's look at how different they are. Okay, first of all, they get serious about learning. They are religious, they um, pay attention, and they follow God's law. So two exact opposites. If you go back to the person who is not the sensible person, they're often naive, they're often gullible, they are mentally immature. Now that's a difference in saying they're mentally incompetent. They're mentally immature because they're often lazy, they often don't want to learn, so if they don't want to learn, they're going to continue going down the wrong path. And if they continue going down the wrong path, they will eventually, as Solomon says, live like a fool. And that's his words, not mine. Okay. Now, if you look at another example that they give is go back and read Proverbs 7. And it talks about a woman who goes out to lure the guy who walks by her path. Now, she has just finished taking her wedding vows, and she goes out and seduces the man walking down her street and says her husband is off on a trip and seduces him to come in, and so she leads him down the path of hell. And that's what verse 27 says. Her house is the way to hell, going down the chambers of death. So is that person being foolish? Definitely. They're not being wise. They're taken to their own desires. All right. We have many opportunities every single day to improve our character and improve our circumstances. We're old and we're wise. What are three ways that we can improve our circumstances? You ought to be able to clip them off. What's the first thing we should always do? Pray. Pray. Okay. And that goes hand in hand with Studying God's Word. Okay, what's another thing that we should do? Pray. 
We have done. If we make a mistake, do we keep doing that same mistake? <laughs> exactly. We learn from it and we change our direction, right? So we, we apply wisdom. And we also seek to read God's word and apply it in our lives and try to live by it and live a path that's better. All right? <clears throat> then we talk about making reparations. Now, when I hear the word reparation, it does, I don't think about what Solomon is talking about. What do you think about when you hear the word? I'm going to see if I'm on the, if I'm too far off. <laughs> do you associate that word with a lot of people are saying those that had ancestors as slaves that they are due reparations? That's how, what I think about when I hear the word. Okay, well, a reparation was actually, it was making a sacrifice or giving an offering as an act of making a reparation for the sin that you had committed. And the Bible told them under the old Israelite law, when you made a reparation, if I had stolen from Diane, then I was to repay her what I stole from her plus 20%. That was to make the reparation. Well, the fool said, huh, I'm not giving her my money. I earned it and I'm not giving her any of it. So that was the difference in the person who was following what God told them to do and what the fool did. The fool was described as the upright. Okay, the upright was being in a good relationship with God. The fool didn't care about other people. They scoffed at making reparation because if they didn't believe in God or they didn't follow God's rule, then why are they going to be held accountable to God's standards? They're not, so therefore they scoffed at it. They thought they were all right. Now, if you look at that versus the people who are right with God, the person who is right with God cares about the well-being of others. They recognize their covenant with God. Now, to go 